pleased to say Perry Ann Boring is joining us right now over at the Chamber of Digital Commerce. She's the founder and a president of that organization, which is, uh, I think, believe uh, the largest trade organization that we have lobbying on behalf of the blockchain industry. And Perry Ann, let's start off here with sort of what sort of we're seeing right now in the fog of the FTX collapse. And that is a phrase I hear coming up over and over again, which is proof of reserves, something that we didn't necessarily hear or see out of FTX, but a lot of other folks in this industry are stepping up and trying to show their cards. Yeah, we certainly are encouraged by the industry's response to being more receptive to implementing proof of reserves. There were conversations about proof of reserves after the Mt. Gox collapse in 2013, and there's been a few others uh, over the years. 18 months ago, at the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we published industry best practices to give the industry a better guide on how to implement proof of reserves. We cannot, as an industry, wait on policymakers any longer. The yeah. industry must take concrete steps today to implement measures to restore trust and transparency in the market. Is this, this is one it, way to go about that. Is this a unified industry, though? There are a lot of people drawing the distinction uh, between, I guess, will, particularly that done on a more centralized exchange and maybe what we're seeing in the true uh, decentralized finance world. Look, Proof of reserves has a lot of industry support behind it. Uh, again, the, what's unique about this space is you have on-chain data. Why wouldn't we use the technology itself to add more resilience and transparency and trust in these markets? This is something that is widely accepted by the industry, and we're encouraging all digital asset custodians to take steps to implement proof, proof of reserves, proof of solvency, to have third-party auditors go over this mm -hmm. and look to the proof of uh, the best practice that we put out almost two years ago to help guide them in doing that. Is that enough to help boost consumer confidence right now? It is a solid and concrete step that should have been implemented years ago. It is a starting point. We also need a concerted and a coordinated regulatory approach. That is going to take several years. The regulatory conversations have been around for years. We made a lot of progress this Congress. But again, we cannot wait for policymakers. The industry needs to start taking concrete steps now, and this is a starting point. Uh, to play devil's advocate here, there are some folks uh, who would say that, you know, more strict regulation, more strict uh, laws out there probably wouldn't have prevented the collapse of FTX. And I believe CZ over at Binance said something to that effect a little bit earlier today over in uh, Bali, Indonesia here. What do you make of that? Look, there's bad, you can't, you can't regulate into compliance a bad actor. If you have a bad actor, you know, that is their intent. So, I mean, from the policy perspective in Washington, I'll just highlight one example where we have a disjointed and uncoordinated approach. You have the SEC who's come out and said that pretty much all digital assets except Bitcoin are securities. And then you have the CFTC saying, no, many of them are commodities. So we have conflicting mm -hmm. statements from the agencies, and that is a huge reason why so much crypto activity has gone overseas. And you look where that brought us last week. So yes, we do need a regulatory framework that encourages companies to come in and get regulated and to have regulatory oversight in the U.S. We've pushed all of that away. Uh, but in the absence of having that, the industry needs to take every step it can to take common sense approaches to creating better transparency in these markets. Outside of the proof of reserves conversation, which you've started, what do you see as some other changes that you think the industry needs to see? We've talked a lot about leverage uh, uh, right now, margin calls, understanding risk management. How do you see all of those external forces as well being helpful to this industry? Look well, at the Chamber of Digital Commerce. We lead with a, a principle of compliance being ethical uh, market participants. We preach that to our members on a regular basis. Unfortunately, there are bad actors out there, and there are companies who are, are you know, abusive in this technology ecosystem. There's another pledge that I'll point everybody to. This, the, it, Solidus Labs put together a pledge. And we, ha we are one of the sponsors of that. There's uh, over a dozen market participants who have signed this pledge. 
to address market manipulation in the industry, such as front running, trading against clients, uh, better uh, security standards, uh, and uh, you know, committing to to not engaging in market manipulating mm -hmm. activity. Again, if we had a regulatory framework that encourages companies to come in and get registered and have you know proper oversight, you wouldn't right. see all of this happening overseas. A lot of that bad activity it's happening outside of the United States. Policy makers have an opportunity to bring this activity in the U.S. that is the right thing to do, but you've got to do it in a way that makes sense and incentivizes right. companies to come in and get registered. Well, it's happening out of the United States for a, a very specific reason, of course, we know, and I mean, there's a reason why you have companies set up in the Bahamas or you have a Binance structure where it's not really set up anywhere here. Uh, when it comes to the regulatory umbrella in the United States here and the idea of bringing some of these companies under that umbrella, do you prefer that the SEC lead that charge? The CFTC? Who? This is the debate in Washington today, and it's unclear what the most appropriate path forward is. Uh, we need a taxonomy that we all agree with. There's a difference between digital asset securities, non-fungible tokens, payment systems like stable coins, digital commodities like Bitcoin. We need to agree on what that taxonomy is. We've made some steps forward in this Congress. Notably, Senators Lummis and Gillibrand introduced the Responsible Financial Innovation Act. It's a solid step forward in creating a regulatory environment that will work for this ecosystem. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do. And ultimately, I do think it's Congress that's going to have to create that framework. It, it's possible we'll see something passed in next year or within the next two years, it may take longer than that. Uh, it is more important that we get it right than we rush it, which is why we are really encouraging the industry to take individual steps that they can today to restore confidence in the markets. When and look, we are going to come out the other side of this. Mm -hmm. you know, this is a, a catastrophe. This is you know an awful thing to have to experience. But crypto is stronger than just one market player. We mm -hmm. are better than one bad actor. And this is a very resilient industry. Well, and talk we will to me about that. Side. It are your members and customers and some of these retail traders angry or do they understand that when you have an emerging asset class, this is part of the growing pains and this is what happens when you are trying to grow and become something more mature and this is maybe not normal or healthy but part of that process or is there real anger behind this? I'm sure there's lots of people who are very angry. A lot of people have lost a lot of money. A lot of people have had their money stolen from them. A lot of people have, you know, allegedly been defrauded because of this. Uh, look, any technology, all industries, they there are bad actors. It's just a, a reality of the, the broken and fallen world that we live in. But again, we are much bigger than just one bad actor. And this technology has incredible promises. Just yeah. look, look at the function of, of a crypto exchange to allow people to trade their assets 24-7. You can't do that with legacy infrastructure today. It's just logical that we're going to move to better technology, better rails to trade our digital property 24-7. Seven, payment systems, a digital dollar. We, you know, why wouldn't we want to have a digital dollar that, that, that can extend the dollar's use in places yeah. that it can't go today? Like This is where innovation is going. Yeah. While this is absolutely a setback, volatility is normal in a, techno in a new technology ecosystem. Well, the innovation is certainly there. The broader question is right now, at least in the aftermath of FTX, is the one of trust. Perry Ann Boring, really great that you could take time to catch up with us. She's the founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, a leading trade organization for the blockchain community.